Hello everyone, my name is Jorge Quintero, and in this demo, we will cover how to leverage the Azure Connector Insecure Workload to protect your cloud workloads. So now we will jump into our demo environment. So here we are in Secure Workload, and we will navigate to Manage Workloads Connectors, and we will select the Azure Connector. And as you can see, I already have one Azure Connector configured, but we will go through the onboarding process. So I will click on Edit Connector, and you will see the different capabilities available within the connector, starting with gathering labels, ingesting flow logs, segmentation, and managed Kubernetes services. Secure Workload will automatically generate with the connector an Azure ARM template with the required permissions depending on the capability selected. I will download this ARM template and I will copy the contents of the template. Now, after copying the, the contents of this template, I will navigate to Azure Subscriptions, select the subscription I want to onboard, that, that, that I want to use for, for the connector, and then access to the access control, IAM, and add a custom role. Under the custom role, I proceed to edit it and paste the Azure ARM template from Secure Workload. Make sure that you always select to edit because it will not allow you to paste it. So once you paste it and before saving it, make sure that you modify the subscription ID from the ARM template for your subscription ID. Once saved, you will notice that the template takes effect assigning a description and you need to assign a name for it. In this case, we will just put CSW test. And in the permissions tab, you will also see the full list of permissions assigned by the template. And at this point, you just need to save it. But since I already have one, I will just showcase the one in use, which is the CSW role. I do the search and this is the role I'm currently using. And as you can see, just for reference, the full set of permissions for this account is 33 permissions. Now, navigate to Azure Active Directory and App Registrations and register a new application. In this case, this application will be used by Secure Workload. I'm assigning a name to this. So you can see it's just CSW App. And you can leave the other values as default, right? And you click on register. Since I already have a connector integrated, I will just select the one in use, which is a DMZ CSW lab. And here, take note of the app ID, tenant ID, as well as the secrets or certificates for authentication. Remember, the secret will sh be shown only once, so make sure you note it down. Now, the last step for onboarding is to assign the custom role to this application you created. And for this, we navigate back to subscription, access control, and add the role assignment. Search for the role to use, right? In this case, we will use the CSW role. That is the one that is already integrated. And you need to select an application to be a member for this role. Now, after gathering all the authentication details, now we will confirm that the required NSG and flow locks are in place. And for this, we navigate to network security groups and look for the subnet level NSG. Important, please keep in mind that secure workload only ingests uh, subnet flow locks, right? It doesn't ingest VNIC level flow locks. Once the subnet level NSG is selected, in this case, you could see that Secure Workload had already some automated rules because I already have it in integrated. You also need to keep in mind that you must associate each subnet within the VNet to the NSG flow logs. 
right? That is the way how we capture the flow logs for all of those subnets. And importantly, for the NSG flow logs, secure workload only ingest flow logs version two. So make sure you set them to version two, as well as the storage account and a minimum of two days for retention period. Now we'll navigate back to secure workload and we will come back to our connector. We will click on edit alt info and here is where you will input the subscription ID, tenant ID and client ID that is the app ID that we um, selected before. Right? So since we already have it integrated, I will just select next. And once authenticated, you will see all the vignettes, the subscription it has access to and you can select which ones to onboard to secure workload with their capabilities. We recommend to always start with labeling gathering and flow logs ingestion and leave segmentation once policies are tailored. Now, secure workload also suggests where to position in the scope structure within your organizational hierarchy, this VNet, right? In this case, I will select my cloud scope, which is for Azure. Once you select it, you just click save and it will redirect you to the scope structure. If I navigate to my internal organization, cloud and Azure, you will see the newly onboarded VNet in the East US region. Now I have this application is called the store app Azure, which we already have some workers running there. And you can see all the labels that are being ingested from Azure Cloud. And this is done automatically without secure workload assigning this to, to the workloads, right? We're ingesting them directly from Azure. And if we navigate back to Azure, in this case to the AD workload, we can see where these tags are coming from. Right, we can see how this workload is tagged and is mapped to the ones that we see in secure workload. Now, navigating back to secure workload, we'll go to segmentation and we will proceed to enforce the application. In this case, the store app Azure. I already have the policies defined for this application, as you can see here, and we can see the application behavior and the policies that will be enforced in Azure Network Security Groups. We can also see the labels that are being used by this application and how they are dynamically mapped to each workload in the cloud. You can see here that is the interface ID that is for the front NIC, the machine name, recommendation, and all of this is being ingested dynamically from Azure. Now we will proceed to enforce the policies. So we click on the enforcement button. We select the policy that we want to enforce and we click next and we follow the enforcement workflow. Now we will navigate back to Azure Cloud and we will see how this policies looks like in our NSG. Now, important to mention, Secure Workload enforces these policies at the VNIC level of each instance. In this case, I'm checking the front-end NIC NSG. And we can see how Secure Work Workload automated all the policies in Azure Network Security Groups. I will now test the application. I will try to access it. And in this case is the store app Azure that I have under my store clouds folder. And you can see that I still have access to my application. Now I will navigate back to secure workload and I will stop the policy enforcement. 
let's say for example that you want to decommission the policies of this application or you want to decommission the application itself and if i navigate back to assure we can see how secure workload automatically remove all of these policies that were pushed to the network security groups in the cloud and with this we finish our demo for today i hope you enjoy it please subscribe